give up forever to touch you Cause I know that you feel me somehow You're the close Welcome to Spirituality with a Spin. I am Ryan Keyes, your host, and that was the Goo Goo Dolls, Iris, from the City of Angels. Angels are all around you. They are lifting you up right this moment. So we looked into some angel signs, some angel synchronicities, the 1111, which is synonymous across the board. That is the moment of awakening when you see that, that sign. It's a moment where you can plant a seed and say, God, see me, hear me. I see you. I, I'm going to be there. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a difference. So we stood together Friday at 11.11 at 11.11. We planted a seed. We moved in a mass of people, over 2,000 people to my count at this moment, and I got over 1,000 emails. It was magnificent, majestic. It was miraculous. But with every high comes a down. With every ying is a yang. And I'll tell you, I felt it. I felt it. I already did one show for Sunday, and I did not upload it, so I have two shows in the pipe. There's this show and then the show I did a little bit a while back. I cried like a little baby on Sunday, trying to see my deeper self, trying to cleanse, trying to rationalize, trying to realize, trying to be the best me I can be, find the better me. All the while knowing that someone's out there helping me to be a better man. So what is this awakening? What is this twin flame quaking that everyone is talking about? What is the twin flame? Two names, one soul. What is it? They talk about it in all kinds of areas of the internet. The Bible talked about it. it said Adam was lonely. God created woman so that Adam would not experience loneliness and he would have love. Ooh, Genesis, the Genesis moment. So, God does want you to be in a relationship, but you have to work on yourself as well. You got to bring your game, baby. So, in the course of this twin flame scenario, we've been talking about the ebb, the flow, the run, the chase, the reunion, all of those things, and we're going to cover more. I've got another show that I've got to release this week sometime. It's part four to the running and chasing and uh, I think you'll find that uh, very helpful, and that will wind up our running situation for the moment. And then I've got uh, next week I'm going to address uh, the consciousness and being conscious in the relationship once you are in it, whether the running has happened, or the separation has happened, or whether you've come back for your reunion. So I'm going to go over some things, some signs again. Review week, review week, because I think it is important. I'm going to go over a lot of them because there's a lot of stuff going on. I want you to know about this. There's a quote that I really, really love. It says, the best love is the love that awakens the soul, a love that plants a fire in your heart and brings peace to your mind. That's what you've been, you are looking for. That's what you have found. And I hope that you have that forever. It's unknown. I don't know who said it, but I like that they did. So you come into contact with a lot of people, you date a lot of people, you see a lot of people, but there'll be that one person where you feel like you've known them for years, even in the first glance. It's an instantaneous connection. It's a fragment of a second, a gaze, where time stops, time disappears. When you look into their eyes and you have known them a lifetime, where that split second seems like an eternity. You immediately feel their hurt. You immediately feel their pain. You immediately see their light. You immediately see their darkness. And a fire is ignited inside of you. It will almost feel as if you are hypnotized. It will almost feel as if you're mesmerized. But it is like two stars colliding in space. You will understand each other on such a deep level. 
that you are always in tune. You're energetically, intellectually, emotionally, physically, and psychologically in sync. You just communicate subtly with a look, a consciousness, an awareness, thought patterns that don't make sense, things that will leave you second guessing, is this real? They will bring out the best in you and the worst. Massive extremes. Because it's monumental. You'll know that they exist with or without, but the confidence that you want to be together skyrockets to the roof. You just want to be with them. You don't know why. You feel it. You have faith in it. They empower you to be and become your authentic self. Because they see you. You see them. They question you. You question them. They build you up. You build them up. You see their darkness and their light and vice versa. You can create a world, a new world together. This creativity can explode. It can become your new playground, your new passion. It will pronounce your name as you go forward, where you can manifest things into existence, into reality, where you find that walk, where you build the new temple of your union in honor to your creator. Because God doesn't want you to be alone. If we were designed to be alone, well shit, everything would be blue and we'd be walking around with no emotion and there would have never been more than one sex. We would have been androgynous and we'd been able to self-replicate without needing anybody. But that didn't happen. So let's go to nature and look. Let's go to the garden and look. God gave us a partner. God wants us to be with someone. Question it if you may, but it is something that God wants. And you have to be equally yoked. You cannot take your bag of darkness and believe that you're going to find someone only with light. You can't take your whole bag of light and believe that you're going to find someone with it doesn't have both because it's equal, it's balance. You need to find balance. Even scripture says about being equally yoked. That's why many of the time you will look very similar. The thing that will be different a lot of times is the age gap. One will be a student, one will be a teacher. One will be a cheerleader, one will be the player. One will be the warrior, one will be the provider. One will nurture, one will protect. And then as we've already established, you'll have a telepathic link. I've got a video about that telepathy, where you just feel it, where it's there, where it's amazing, where it just transits across time and space, right? Oh, it is a delicate place to be. But remember, this soul is a mirror. It's like an existential earthquake, a sudden sense of immense importance and impact in your life. It has entered a sudden state of being overwhelming. Change in a way that you've never been aware of. Intuitively, you know that you're like, what is this? I feel this. I don't know what it is. It's something like you've never experienced before. It's breathtaking. It's ferocious. It's fiery, it's intense, it's a transformative process. It requires you to see the mirror in yourself. Now, I ascertain that when God brings this to you, God wants you to have it. God is putting this in your path because you are coming together in union. And as long as you maintain the hierarchy of that belief and you put your faith into something that is unseen, when you can believe past your own insecurities and your own inadequacies into something bigger. That will give you an advantage. That will help you to be able to see the true light of the situation. You'll be able to open that blessing to another conscious level of living. Don't allow your low self-esteem, don't allow your insecurities to get the best of you. Don't suffocate for fear to eradicate. Essentially, you're going to reflect on the deepest needs and desires and dreams, and even those shadow elements of the soul. You're going to mirror those in each other. It's not going to be always bells and whistles and hummingbirds and butterflies, romantic, but it is going to be like nothing you've ever imagined. 
Hmm. The conscious development. Becoming awake. Consciousness. Now, Plato talked about it. Plato coined the phrase of the twin flame. And I don't necessarily say that Plato is the end-all be-all. Because I go back to the garden. I go back to the Adam and Eve effect. I go back to the original man and the original woman that are coming together in the spirit. Lovers don't finally meet somewhere. They're in each other all along. And you know who said that? A very inspirational man. Rumi. Now, we're always not receptive of this event. It will not come without feeling strange. And you will have a tough time with this because you will feel as if it is not necessarily organic. But then part of you feels that it is. It's just this inexplicable sense of recognition when you meet the other person. Deja vu. And you know that they're going to play an important role in your life, in your development. You don't know the how, whens, or whys, but you know they will be. That intense connection is invigorating and shocking and unsettling. You feel as though you've finally found a home. But then it starts to change, right? You start to get scared because a fear of rejection or persecution or judgment, or you look for the negative so that you can combat the boundaries, redefine those boundaries to save yourself, to protect yourself. Because once you encounter the authentic self and once you begin to embody the yin and the yang, once you begin to balance out the light and the dark, it does feel as if it is overwhelming. Ultimately, they will make you a better person, but it will be a tug of war. When you're together, you're, it will not be a codependency. You understand? You will have a love like you've never loved before, but you will allow them to be independently of who they are. It's going to be just finely tuned. It's energetic. But when they're happy, you will be happy. When they're sad, you will also feel some sadness. It's going to be like you're both kind of in this empathic relationship, very uh, empathy-based. Waiting for this person your entire life. It's just going to be that one moment of recognition that will just rock your world. You'll have the same dreams, the same desires. You'll have many hobbies. You'll like the same songs. You like the same food. Yeah. So no matter how many times you try to avoid or leave your twin flame, you will always magnetically attract back to them. But I'm not talking about an abusive relationship. There's no name calling. There's no beating. There's no negatives that come with it. But leaving is painful. One of you will be more soulfully mature than the other. One of you will serve as the teacher or the counselor or the confidant. You'll be taught important life lessons such as forgiveness and gratitude and empathy and open-mindedness and respect. It'll be a multifaceted connection. Friend, lover, teacher, nurturer, family, muse. All in one. You can tell them anything. And they won't judge you. They can't judge you. By their mirror, you will have the same balance. And you both feel driven towards a higher purpose. Something socially, socially, spiritually, and psychologically intense towards one goal. Generally a mission to better those things around you. Right? Now, this intensity... This, these signs, if you're showing these signs, what do you do? How do you deal with these signs? Because it's tough. Once you recognize that this person is your soulmate or your twin or your Eve or your Adam, you have to keep in mind when this takes place that you've both traveled down a pretty long, lengthy path. You've become ready to meet, yet when you do, it's going to have kind of a spiritual taboo it's going to be 
slightly painful because you're going to have a lot of growth in this relationship. It's not going to necessarily be the answer to your problems, but it will be find the answer yourself. Like I said, you could call it your true love, your true soul, your true twin flame, whatever you'd like to call this vibrational being that resonates in your same wavelength, this counterpart, this counterbalance that is you. They've come when you've called. And meeting a flame doesn't automatically fill the void of your life, believe me. It's not going to automatically answer those unanswered questions that you have. It's not going to be your automatic cure to loneliness. It's not going to be the sole reason why you wake up in the morning and want to walk on sunshine. It's going to be an accelerant. It's going to be a spark. It's going to be an ignite. So whatever stage you're in, you have to find that self-love, that self-happiness, which is an episode that's going to be following this this week about self-love, about change. Remember, this is the amplification of your being and your better half and who you are, your twin flame, right? The biggest mirror. Work on yourself. So we're talking about those signs and those symptoms of the twin flame connection, right? But what happens when you dive into some of those even deeper? You begin to dissect them even more. The moment that you meet your twin or your soulmate, if you want to call it, whatever you want to define it as, the moment when you meet the person that you feel like you've known them your whole entire life, that moment, that moment of instantaneous recognition where it's like, what the hell just happened? I feel like that person has got me locked under the love spell because you can't explain it. Your normal consciousness doesn't, it, it can't wrap itself around it. That recognition portion, when you meet the twin flame and there's this instant shock, this recognition that you've seen this person before, you feel this person's energy, you feel more comfortable with this person than you've ever felt with anyone in your life. Now rationalize that. Let's put some flesh on that. Let's put the physical body on that because the physical body is going to go like bing, 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 like an old school pinball machine. You're bouncing the bumpers and the lights are flying. Your body is like, whoa, whoa, what is this? This is hot. This is hell. This is sexy and your brain's on overload, you're trying to figure out where you recognize them from, and your soul's got this instantaneous recognition that you just cannot get past. You recognize this person because you always have. The only key word I can think of at this moment to describe that feeling is home. Like coming home. It's a recognition of place and time and space in a person. Right? Because this... Like they say, home is where the heart is. And all of a sudden, this is where your heart feels. It beats. And it's scary because it is a moment where there's so much vulnerability inside of your body, inside of who you are, inside of your being, when you feel vulnerable. So you want to recoil. You want to kind of pull back, but you want to go forward. It's a very conflicting situation. So you start to fashion this joint identity instantly. You start to... Your individuality seems to be pinned on each other. Even though you're two very different beings, you have this multitude, as we've talked about, these huge similarities. It's like this merging of your individual design, your dreams, your needs, your wants, into a place where they've found a home. So even though you're two very different individuals with your own peculiarities, those seem to go in full sync together. So that's when you result in a twin flame or soulmate union, which seems to be um, this symphony. And this intensity is overwhelming. I mean, it's like just the sound of their voice puts you on full aware. Like you're like, wow, the, their voice is like, magic their voice calls out to you it's like this beautiful vibration to your your heart and that intensity does take a little bit of getting used to because it's not going to really ever lessen their voice is always going to bring that out in you it's always going to have that 
Now, what you have to recognize instead of running is the level of growth which can happen here. Because one of you is going to always take a role of a teacher and it's going to flip flop back and forth, age difference, or whatever it is. But so you have the opportunity to establish such a high growth level of your physical, spiritual, emotional being that it's going to be leaps and bounds to whatever you've been before. It's a high level, much higher than you've experienced. A huge mirror to your spiritual activation. When you go forward and when you start realizing this and you really need to look at it through the eyes of empathy, right? You need to approach it through the eyes of empathy because a lot of it will be confusing. A lot of the conversation will be confusing. It'll be kind of like walking on eggshells a little bit because everybody's going to be so afraid to get hurt or so afraid to, to lose that person because this feeling, this awareness, this awakening is such a high level. It's like nothing you've experienced before. And obviously one of you is going to feel as if it's false or if it's not necessarily real. So you're going to question it. The others are going to have no question. Isn't that the beauty of the universe? Isn't that the beauty of mankind? So approach it with empathy. Allow an empathetic state to kind of transmute into your level of, of understanding here. Start to look at it with happiness and strengthening, validating one another, validating those emotions. Because this arrival has been awaited your whole life. And a lot of times it's going to come with that level of stress or that level of like, whoa, wait, but yeah, I've been waiting for this, but now that it's here, I don't know if I can handle it because it's a little hot, right? It's a little bit, I mean, it, it's intense. It's like when you go through college and all of a sudden you graduate and you go get that job you trained for for the past four years and you're like, whoa, whoa, I don't even know what to do. I just went to school for it, but I can't. it's completely different. So start to understand the causes and begin to allow those pieces to fall into place instead of divorcing them out of place. Because truly, you're going to want to shake it up. Your, your, your flesh is going to be on board. Your spirit's going to have recognition, but the mind can't get those two linked up. So you're going to gather reasons why it's not supposed to work. You're going to look for places to sabotage it especially if you've come from a place where you've sabotaged a lot of things in your life already, or if people around you sabotage relationships, any relationship that you've had in the past, which has been negative or which has caused you issues will also be echoed in this twin flame experience. Like in my situation, the relationship with my father dying or an abandonment and not wanting to love more than I could stand to lose would be one of the things that would actually be echoed in this situation. I would be more, a little bit more needy, a little bit more emotional, reaching out to my twin, trying to be like, wait, whoa, whoa, are you leaving? So I would end up inadvertently becoming the chaser because of my past. I have to go through that whole process and deal with that where the other person's going to become the runner because they're like, Probably the person that's involved with uh, being the super person to take care of themselves and not um, be involved and to be on the outer outskirts of life, just a little bit out of reach always. So that arrival is going to require you to put trust in both yourself and in God and in each other. But don't deny that magnetism. It's drawing you together and it's going to draw you together. If you spend time apart pursuing your goals, whenever you come back together, you'll still feel this draw, right? When you hear their voice, when you sit and listen to them, if you look at their eyes, it's going to connect right back to that moment. That's one of the big, huge signs about this. And I think where most people are, are missing some of the, the, the importance to this is the spiritual portion. One person is going to be a little bit more spiritually inclined than the other. The other person is going to want to travel down their own spiritual path. But if you do it together, you'll make a lot more headway. You'll reach higher levels of consciousness. You'll be able to become a much more highly evolved couple. It might seem impossible, but you'll be able to reach those goals easier. 
So once you start to begin to accept this relationship and fully accept this recognition that this is your twin and you stop questioning the universe, you stop questioning that God has given you this gift. When you stop questioning that, that's when even more changes will come from within. And that's when you have to be um, really compassionate and empathetic with each other. That's when you have to really look towards the truth of life because you're not going to feel like you've ever felt before. And you don't want to be made fun of. You don't want to be belittled. You don't want to feel like if you share thoughts that it's going to be judged. You need to, com to communicate with a, a high level of empathy, with a high level of understanding for your twin. You need to be able to look at them and talk to them honestly and to listen to them honestly without judging them, right? These are some of the important things. It's a life learning lesson, truly. This is a lesson that you've waited your whole life to go through, where your individuality has become part of a situation in which both of your individual entities coming together, interwo interwoven for strength, for security, for love, for the higher purpose, for source. And now you've become one. You've become interwoven, braided, stronger, able to do more things, able to visualize and, and fashion new goals on a spiritual playing field. Now, be supportive. Allow the healing. You're, you're going to go through a lot of unconditional things where you need to experience unconditional love, right? Because you're going to have a lot of trauma, a lot of past hurt that's going to come up, and you need to support each other. Don't allow these, emis uh, these emotional issues of distrust or jealousy or fear to turn on each other because no relationship that you experience is going to lack that. There's always going to be a little bit of a, a learning curve in every relationship that you go through. And you need to be able to recognize that and recognize this instantaneous connection for what it is and this authenticity for what it is. Right. And fully understand the gift that you've been given and embrace it instead of running and chasing. So these are, really, really important traits. And again, I speak to the balance because you are going to be a mirror. You're going to balance each other out like dark yin and yang, masculine, feminine. One aspect of your twin soul will be mirrored and balanced by you in return. If one twin is dark, the other is going to be more light. The balance will be complete. This harmony will be abundant. It will overturn all of the past. It will correct your karmic wheel, so to speak. If one is introverted, the other will be more extrovert. It will find a social balance. The mirror is the key aspect of the spirituality. And it is complete. So don't fear the union. Embrace it. Understand that it is about balancing. So those are the ways that you can go through and learn to recognize the twin flame connection and learn to embrace the twin flame symptoms and the signs. And this is a revisiting of this information because I feel that it needs to be retold and I added a lot more signs here. But all I can say is if it ends up not being a 3D relationship for you, Seek self-love. Seek a higher level of understanding. And then you have to learn to decide for yourself if you want to continue your mission alone or if you want to open up your heart for a soulmate that would not be necessarily the counterpart of the twin flame. All of those things come with time. Don't feel that you're on a rush. It's not a race. So I think approach this from a, a level of being aware if this is a codependent relationship and if it is if there is violence involved if there is um, belittling involved if there's abuse in any way back away that's not from the creator that's not from our source that's not from god so you just want to look at it with a very open mind and realize that there's a lot of opinions out there but at the end of the day I can't tell you, no other psychic can tell you, no other 
uh, preacher can tell you, no monk can tell you, nobody can tell you your truth, only you can. And this person should make you seek your truth. This person should immediately change your life in so many ways that you don't even understand how it happened so quickly. And if you embrace that person, you will truly obtain the highest level that you can in this lifetime of love, of expressing love and sharing love and giving love to all those around you. You will be able to actually mirror the source and let that source flow through you like a river. Peace, light, and love, and I will see you on the other side.